Hey guys, it's Rich with Mowers and Blowers Outdone. And today we have a special edition. We'll be drinking some coffee. And we'll be replacing this uh, radiator in a 2003 Ford Ranger. So you guys just stay tuned. So what do we got? What are we looking at? Well, this is a 2003 Ford Ranger and uh, we will be changing out the radiator. I believe this is an edge edition. So, and it is the extended cab. All right, today we will be uh, doing a little overview here. What what's going on with it so these radiators nowadays they they have these plastic sides on them and at, over a certain amount of time whatever time that is they decide to start leaking so you can see some of the drainage right here that where it's leaking out and it's uh, not overheating but we are losing coolant every time that happens so as you drive it so what is involved in taking this out you guys this is really something that the average person can do this isn't nothing hard uh, these are pretty simple to do and you just need some basic tools this this little tool kit here is a ultra steel tool kit it was given to me by one of my subscribers and uh, you can get these things just it's nothing special kind of cheap actually but hey it works and uh, just my point is you don't need no fancy tools to do this job now we need some sockets we'll need a, a screwdriver and I love this little thing here I don't know if you guys have one of these or not it has multiple sizes on it so and it tells you like a 9 16 is kind of like a 14 millimeter so it's about the same size a 3 4 is a 19 millimeter oh wait what is that uh yeah 9 16 is a 14 millimeter uh 3 4 is like a 19 millimeter so it gives you kind of a perspective of what what works so if you need a 17 millimeter right here this will work if you need a 11 16 this will work all right will work in every case eh, I don't know but it's been working for me so this is name brand is like an easy tool has a little magnet here on the side but these are these things are awesome and uh, what else will we need we will need uh, a couple little sockets 10 10 millimeter sockets like a 5 8 wrench and I think that's about it and some coffee definitely need some mowers and blowers outdone coffee and uh, if you guys are interested in in a coffee cup down in the description you can get one so all right, let's look and see what we got here. Let's assess the situation before we begin. So our radiator's up here on the top. We have some uh, trans lines that go right here. And really, there's two of them. So there's one here and one there. So you might see some other things that look like they might be hooked to this radiator, but it's not. There is a, fran uh, there is a fan shroud. Your breather is here in the way a little bit and there is only four bolts that hold the radiator in there's one right here and one right here so that's two and then there's two on the other side so easy easy and simple so on these two you got the two bolts one right here one right here and then on this side you have a hose that goes to your engine 
so that goes right up here to the top and it goes flows through there and comes out the bottom and goes back into the engine so we have two hoses one at the bottom here the big round thing down there right there and then we have one at the top we have two trans lines these coolant lines here one and two we have four bolts and then a couple little other things we will be taking off this to get this out of our way so we'll just take a little screwdriver pull that off pull this uh, airline off here whatever technical term it is we don't need to know the technical term we just need to know it comes off we have to unplug this right here and then there's two little we'll go ahead and do it right right here there's two of these you undo these and this breather will come up just like that so we'll remove this we're gonna remove this whole thing right here we don't have to remove this just this right here should be good should come right off we'll see if we have to take this one off because it's attached I guess we could I don't know I didn't investigate it that far yet but uh, if this doesn't want to slide off then maybe we can just undo this and maybe it, if that's the only one holding it on that will come right off so maybe we'll look at that so that's kind of assess the situation and then once we get this loose here this will just slide back it'll be enough room there and then you're just going to lift the radiator right up out of here pretty easy anybody can do it with these simple tools nothing hard about it so let's go ahead and uh, I got a drain bucket down there somewhere so there's two ways to drain this yeah let's go over that. there's a couple ways you can drain this there is a peacock that you can drain it through which I got it set up there so our bucket let's go down here on the side this is the passenger side so our bucket right there just something to catch the, the fluid and you'll see a peacock right there so here is your peacock right there let me just go ahead and grab onto it and point it out if I can hold the camera one-handed so right here so I loosened it up with this handy dandy tool and it was a 19 millimeter or a three-fourths went right on there so just loosen that up right there now I can undo it with my fingers so and fluid should start pouring out of here we'll see There we go. See that? That's all you do. Now you wait and let that drain. Now don't pull this plug all the way out because it'll be coming gushing out of there. All right, so we got it draining. All right, and then just let it drain. So let's move over to the other bottom side. So we got that draining over there. See it draining. now. If you don't want to wait, you can remove this hose right here, this little clamp, take a pair of pliers that you need to pull that off, and then it's just going to gush out. So you got to be prepared. If you don't want to do it nice and slow, and you want to just gush it out, and got to have a nice bucket to catch that, because it is going to come out fast. So. You can do it this way and just drain it like in two seconds. All right, so back up here on the top. So make sure, you know, obviously this isn't hot. So go ahead and pull your cap off of here. Let it drain, get some air in there and drain a little faster. Now while that's draining, because we are doing a little peacock and letting it drain, we are going to go ahead and remove 
some of these other things. Now I'm debating. I really only need to show you a couple things because it's exactly the same on the other side. So we're going to take off these two bolts. We're going to remove these. And that's it for right now. We are going to take this off. So let's go ahead and we're going to take this breather off, get that out of the way. So let's go ahead and get the breather off. So you can either do a uh, flathead screwdriver or I think it was an 8 millimeter to release this. And as simple as pulling that off. Loosening that up so that can slide off. And then I am going to release these two buttons over here. So we're going to pull this off by pushing down on this clip. And that will pull right off. Just like that. So let's get this out of the way. If you have a clip that's holding it right there, could be. The camera's about ready to fall over. Hold on. Alright, so you might have a uh, clip there to hold that on. Pull that out. Like that. Just kind of put this over somewhere. Out of the way. Release. There's two clips here for your air cleaner. And if you guys don't change your own air filter, it's very simple to do. You uh, release these two clips, pull this up, and it comes right out. And then here is your air filter underneath here. So, you know, when you go to the oil change place, which is nice and convenient, they want to sell you one of these air filters for 20 bucks or something crazy. And you can get them online for, you know, under ten dollars so you might as well just do that with these two clips pull that out put your air cleaner in and you'll be done all right what else do we got to do we got to get this loose here so we're gonna pull this off oh, I need this breather line off let's pull that back like that And this will come right, right off just like that. So we're going to take this, remove this out of the way. Alright, so now we got some nice room to work with right here. And uh, you can probably hear that draining. It's still draining. It'll take a minute to drain. So we are going to loosen up these bolts here. which I think was a 10 millimeter. Now if you want to position the camera, let's see what you want to do. What you want to do, what you really want to do. Really do. Bring you guys over here to this side. And we are, let's see if I can just lean that down in there. I really only need to do a couple of these because the other two are the same. So we are removing this here and this one right here. Which I believe, are they 10 millimeter? Yeah, this one's a 10 millimeter. And I know you guys get bored watching people unscrew bolts, but uh, here we go. So we need that one and this one. We do it by hand now. Yep. We 
got it. Just loosen it up and it should be able to come by hand. Now, if you have one of these rangers and it's been uh, setting around for a while, what you can do is for a week or so every day spray some WD-40 on all these, all these, and you should be able to uh, come right out. So we have two two different ones. So we have this long one goes on the top, and this other little thinner one goes on the bottom. All right. So now what what you can do is when you lay them down you can put them down like this that way you remember where they go could do that if you can't remember so the next step would be let's loosen these up which I did I got a uh, wrench so I think it's technically a millimeter but this is a 5.8 so it works I, I couldn't find my millimeter so we are going to be taking these off now again WD-40 on this if it's not coming off right so WD-40 every day for a week spray it on there on this one and there's one at the bottom so we'll just let just letting that drain right now so we got these two off, we're going to take those other two off over there. So I went ahead and took them other two bolts off, uh, off camera, just to get those off. It's still draining, so it's going to take a minute to drain this stuff. So now once you get uh, these two bolts off, so this would be the one and the two, the fan shroud will be free. So it'll come off and be able to just lean back just like that. All right. That's all we're going to do. We don't need to take that, that fan off or anything like that. Now the radiator is loose because I took the two bolts off. And it's just still draining. These are just loose here. So they are... Uh, Just waiting, waiting for it to drain. We're just waiting, waiting, waiting. Alright guys, so we're still waiting for it to drain. Uh, another thing you can do is unhook this hose here. So it just slides right off. So that'll be free. Just set it somewhere. And what else can we do while we're waiting around? This will have to come off. This uh, air dam looking thing. So that will definitely come off. Maybe it'll be, come off a little easier once the radiator's out. But what else? So just waiting. Wait, wait, wait. Hurry up and wait. That's why you make yourself some coffee. That way, uh, while you're waiting for the antifreeze to drain, you can drink some coffee. So, another thing, while that's draining, you can uh, remove, you can safely remove that top hose. And we're going to do that. So, while we're waiting for it to drain, take a pair of pliers, pull this back. Then we can take this off. Just like that. You got your pan underneath there if it leaks a little bit. And it's good to come off. So still waiting for it to drain. Alright, let's do just this little bit of recap. So we unhook these two. There's two of them. Two bolts on each side. Now that one one up sets of bolts release this fan guard so that can go slide slide right back we undid the screw right here and so the radiator let's look and see so really the radiator is only held in by one bolt all right and it sets in this little 
shelf right here, I guess. It's not bolted on. There's no bolts. It's just sitting down in there. And then we still have the bottom hose to unhook. Now we have to wait until that's completely drained and to unhook that because it'll come gushing out of there. But it's still draining, guys. And then once we get this up, so the overview, it's already unhooked. Everything's unhooked. We're waiting for it to drain. We will just pull this right up out of there. And just be careful not, you know, make sure these are out all the way. Make sure it's not going to snag on something. Get your shroud back as far as you can. And then you'll pull it back. It's already actually leaning back. So, because it's not bolted in anymore. All right, just waiting. So it's down to a drip. We screw that peacock back in. And uh, now if yours, if you have these little clips on here, these will be inside there. So release those. Let's pull those out. This little plastic clip here. They're just hangers that'll hang your these uh on there so they're unclipped now that is shut up so we got that shut up now we have to move over to the other side here and we're going to move our bucket over here and we are going to release this bottom clip right here and and uh there will be some little bit of antifreeze come out of there. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so we got the bottom hose undone. And now, everything's released. We got this hose out of our way. And push this back as far as you can like that. And this will lift up. And then just make sure it's not getting snagged on something. Kind of ease it up. Make sure you're not snagged. And it will come all the way up eventually. There we go. And it comes out just like that. Go ahead and take a look at this. So we got to take this off, this little bracket here, and this will come off. And look how dirty this was. So it probably wasn't getting a, a good uh, ventilation. So guys, got to make sure this is uh, cleaned off. You can do that with like a power washer, spray it off. That'll work. These right here are just held, this is held in, this air dam. Looks like it's held in by a couple clips. There's one missing. One came out, one's bent here, so should be able to pull that right off like that. And we are missing one clip. So we will need that for our new radiator. And then this is held in by a clip. So, so this bottom uh, bracket is just held in. You can just pinch this off right there, and it'll fall down. There it is. So this is your radiator, and it is quite dirty on top of there.
are dropping that down in there and we're getting those lined up inside there. Okay, that one's lined up. And this one, so it's a little too tall right there. So it's not sitting down where it should be. There we go. Now, it's all nice and lined up. Now this here, these, uh, these little clips are, should go in these holes here. Do it from the back side. And they're kind of stripped out. So, need a couple of these, two or three, these little clips. I'm going to say three, because there's one, two, three holes for it to go in there. We'll push it in the hole. That's the wrong hole, Ridge. We'll get it. All right. Now this is going to go back. We're going to get this back down in that thing there. Back down in the little tray. There we go. And then it is going to be butt, butt up against this, so it'll help hold it on too. So once I get those bolts in there, we can tighten that back up. So I'm going to start putting everything back in. So these ones like this held on the fan. So go ahead and just start putting things back together. And I'll pause the video while I do put all these hand. I'm just going to put them in by hand, get everything lined up. So we got those two in there, and these bigger ones actually hold on your radiator. So we will get those in there, put in there hand tight. Alright guys, so we got these in there hand tight. One, two, three, four of those. Uh, this is just kind of in there, so I have to get some more of those buttons, and I just put these in here, just for now, they're not, I just kind of shoved them in the hole there, just kind of screwed them in a little bit, hand tight. What's next on the plan, uh, this hose goes across here, goes back in there. Just like that, slides on. Hopefully you can see that. And so we got the hose slid on. We've got these four in there, so that's holding on there. Just hand tight. Kind of tighten them down, start tightening stuff down a little bit. And then uh, you want to make sure your fan <laughs> make sure your fan spins without hitting the shroud. So make sure your radiator is seated down in the little holders down there. That is good. Make sure it's seated. Make sure, so these are hand tight. Just double, triple check things. That's how you, that's how you win. So I went through and tightened these down. Just hand tight with a ratchet, nice and uh, tight you don't want to go too tight remember these are plastic here so you don't want to crank it down so much that you're going to crack that plastic and then the big thing make sure your fan blade is spinning without hitting anything so make sure it's on there nice and straight all right then we're going to hook up the hose here so we got this hose that was taken out of the way Pull this back over, slide that back on there, just like that, and then you got your clip. So these clips here, these clips have a little uh, stopper, I guess you can call it, and it will break it from just like clamping on. So all I have to do is put it, get it into position, 
and then release that and then it will tighten up on there so we'll go ahead and do that got it on there nice and tight the hose is that is once you release that from there then you can make your adjustments and make sure that's nice and clamped on there there we go so there's the little notch when you pinch that in for enough it will get caught on there on the other side and it'll hold that clamp open for you so you can easily slide it back and forth so it is on there and then I always like to adjust these in case if uh, you know make it easy to get off next time so you don't want this all the way on the bottom or some weird side where you can't can't reach it all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the bottom hose so don't really need to watch that I guess but I'll be putting the hose on I'll be re positioning positioning the clamp releasing that and then fine-tuning it so there's that bottom one all snug up and I got it positioned where the next person can easily get that clip off of there so we got these tightened up there's two of those here's the two screws over here on this side one and two those are snug down we got this hooked up we have to put our air breather back on there caps there we've got this one all hooked up and then these will be hooked back up to the air breather so let's get the air breather back on there so the air breather is just going to go in there these little clips slide in and this is going back on there All right, so we got that in there, push down on it. It clips the two clips right there. We are hooking this back up. We are hooking this back up. It just slides on, clips on. We are hooking this back up. It pushes in there like that. And we are tightening this back down. So I think that was, there we go. This is a eight millimeter or a flathead screwdriver to fasten this back up. All right, got that, check, check. All right, check, check on all that stuff. Now we have to put some antifreeze in it. Don't forget that. Now, if you can't, do this all in one day like you get called away or something or you come back the next day make sure you write yourself a note there's no antifreeze in it so let's just kind of recap it real fast so we got this air breather on the three clips go in there just kind of push it down the two clips here this is back on this is back on this is nice and tight got the four bolts this is back on got these back on your trans we got the bottom one back on We've got this hose back on the fan is not hitting the shroud and pull this cap off we'll put some antifreeze in it and I just got some 50 50 mix for it uh, this happened to be on sale the peak antifreeze so that's what I'm using today Hey guys, so it's back in there. That's, I did have to reuse this from my old one. And thanks to Tom's Auto Body Shop, I went and got some more little clips. So that is held right into place. If you guys don't know about Tom's Auto Body Shop here in Dundee, go ahead, search them on Facebook, give them a like, and join their Facebook. So that is kind of the overview 
pulled out the radiator, put it back in. There is the old radiator right there. So, got it all back in. Got the antifreeze. I just bought whatever was on sale. I think it was peak antifreeze. Pull that off. And it's all the way to the top there. Now, the big thing, we have to start it up, make sure there are no leaks in it. And then when you poured it, I did leak a little bit. Sorry about that. But, so that is what that is. Make sure your cap's on. And let's go ahead and start it up. I don't know what the better view is up here or me inside the truck starting it. So let's find out. So we double checked all our fittings and connections, made sure that they were good. Let's go crank her over. So we got it started, and now uh, if you want to look for any kind of leaks or anything. So let's pull you off the tripod here. Let's see what's going on. So right here you want to look for any kind of leaks right there. Anything that you disconnected, any hoses, you want to see. You want to make sure that those are nice and on there and down here at the bottom make sure that is now I did accidentally drip some so it does look wet down there but we will have to see if it's actually leaking on the ground or it's just me being clumsy and spilt some just for the for the next couple days you want to take keep an eye on it and make sure that it's not going to leak so as we are driving it it's coming up to temperature so we want to make sure that it doesn't overheat so we do want to do that make sure everything's good now one thing we want to do is uh, when I get back I will probably wipe off all the antifreeze that I spilled on there that way it can be nice and dry so we can see if there's any leaks. That'd be a good thing to do. So I'll remember to wipe that off. Just check for leaks and we'll see if we're golden. So it's going up to temperature. Doesn't seem to be overheating. Been driving around the block here. Hey guys, it's Rich with Mowers and Blowers Outdone. Psh. Hey, thanks for joining me on the special edition of the Ford Ranger changing out a radiator. And I hope this video was helpful and showed you that you can do this with simple tools that you have already at the house. Now, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching. Catch you next time. I'm mowers and blowers outdone.